Who will win the election three weeks from now? The outcome could depend on how members of one very large constituency respond to the urgent call, VOTA. To report our cover story, we've turned to one of the anchors of the nation's largest Spanish language television network, Maria Elena Salinas of Univision. It's been called the Latino explosion. From Desi Arnaz Honey, I'm home. to Sofia Vergara. From Frida Kahlo to Big Papi, David Ortiz. From Carmen Miranda to Lynn Manuel Miranda. From George Lopez to Jennifer Lopez to Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Wherever you look, Latinos and their culture have become a vibrant, inseparable strand of America's DNA. That's one way of looking at it. Here's another. They're taking our jobs, they're taking our manufacturing, they're taking our money, they're taking everything, and they're killing us on the border. USA! USA! The turmoil over immigration, specifically undocumented Mexican immigration, has become one of the hottest hot button issues of the 2016 presidential campaign. We are going to build a great border wall. We will not build a wall. Instead, we will build an economy where everyone who wants a good job can get one. Leaving America's largest minority questioning once again where or if they really fit in. How close is American history tied to Latino history? I think extremely close. In fact, I don't think you can think of uh, the United States without Latino history at all. Frances Negron Montaner is a professor and director of the Latino Archive at New York's Columbia University. Whether you call them Latinos or Hispanics, the terms are generally considered interchangeable. Their role in American history, she says, has been misunderstood and undervalued from the start. There is a sense that uh, Latinos have come here largely as recent immigrants. But in fact, uh, Latinos began their life as part of the United States when the United States uh, crossed over to Latin America in search of territory. Uh, so for instance, the Mexican-American War in which the U.S. acquired half of Mexican territory. And as Mexicans like to say, in that area of the United States, they did not cross the border, the border crossed yeah. them. <laughs> but as America grew, many did cross the border, though they were invited. Mexicans started coming into the United States at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, as they were uh, recruited to work in mining and agriculture as those industries expanded in the Southwest. And then you have World War I and World War II, in which the United States makes a concerted effort to recruit Mexican labor to fill in the gaps left by uh, men going to war. A century later, they're still filling those gaps. Today, we have about 57 million people in the United States who are of Hispanic origin. Mark Hugo Lopez is director of Hispanic Research at the Pew Research Center in Washington, D.C. I think that the impact of the Latino community, particularly on many aspects of American life, is only just beginning. During the past 50 years, the Hispanic population in America has more than quadrupled, from just 4% in 1965 to 18 percent today, with California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Illinois leading the way. You get about two-thirds of the Hispanic population in just those few states. However, the story of Latino population growth has really been one of dispersion as well, and we've seen growth particularly in the South. Right now, Georgia is actually the 10th largest Hispanic state overall. All of which means that come Election Day, America's 27 million eligible Hispanic voters will be a force to be reckoned with. These are the four key states right now where the Hispanic vote could decide the presidential election. We're Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Nevada. And it's interesting because Arizona is a new one on this list. Fernand Amandi is a Miami-based pollster and radio talk show host who focuses on Hispanic voters. How bad are things between Donald Trump and the Hispanic voters? It's about as bad as it gets, Maria Elena. And we asked in our polls if Hispanic voters thought he was a racist. A racist, not whether he has said racist things, but if he was a racist, over 70% of Hispanic voters feel that he is a racist. So I think that's about as bad as it gets. And once again, 
As we've seen in the last four elections, the one state that could be the tipping point in 2016? Florida, where 25% of the population is Hispanic. Well, right now, Hillary Clinton does have a massive lead over Donald Trump with Hispanic voters. Barack Obama got 60% of that mm -hmm. in four, four years ago, and it helped him win the state by less right. than a percentage point. So I think she's going to need every single one of those points. And right now, she's on track to equal or do better than President Obama did in 2012. As Florida Hispanic voters go, so goes the keys to the White House. But historically, Hispanics turn out in low numbers. Only 48% of those eligible voted in 2012. I just think that our community deserves better. Which is where Ben Monterroso comes in. Important. People are more engaged to date, are more knowledgeable to date, and I do hope and expect that they all go out and participate and vote. But I'm not going to sit here and wait for that to happen. Monterroso is executive director of Mi Familia Vota, My Family Votes, a Hispanic voter registration group. More than 400 staff and volunteers are knocking on doors in Arizona and other key states to get people to sign up. And this year, Monterroso says, is different. Why do you want to register? I want to make a difference because of what Donald Trump is saying. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. What happened in, in June 16, 2015 with Donald Trump said Mexicans, he was talking about all of us. He was talking about my mom, he was talking about my sister. You took it personal. I had to. Uh, there was no other way to do it. Trump's stance on immigration has clearly hurt him with many Hispanics. Many, but not all. We can't just throw out immigration laws and say, we don't need these. Anybody who wants to come can come. That's just not how it's going to work. Steve Montenegro is a Republican state representative from Arizona who supports tougher immigration laws. I believe that we need to have an immigration system that works, immigration system that honors immigrants. And at the same time, we have to make sure that we are abiding by the rule of law. As for Trump's claim that many Mexican immigrants are rapists and criminals? I'm not going to assume that I know what's in every candidate's mind, but what I know is that immigrants are honorable people. But true or not, Trump's allegations, says Ben Monterroso of Mi Familia Vota, tarnish all Hispanics. That is, except for the ones you know. People criticize the immigrant community in, in a bunch. Once they get to know somebody, and if it's the nanny who takes care of the baby, oh no, she's, she's, she's good, she's a good immigrant. If it is the gardener who takes care of your garden, oh no, no, not that one. The one that cleans your house, oh no, that one is okay. The one that serves you food in the restaurant, oh, that one is good as well. So we all good. And many Americans agree. In a poll conducted for Sunday morning on the overall influence of Hispanics on American society, 51% said it has been mostly good. Unless you're a Native American Indian, your family is from somewhere else, whether it's five generations back or one generation back. And one, you might say, who has been a very good influence is singer-songwriter Gloria Estefan. The strength of this country is that amazing quilt of so many different colors and ideologies and religions and political leanings and you know that's what makes this country great in the 1960s Gloria and Emilio Estefan fled Castro's Cuba for the US yes they became superstars but their journey is typical of millions of immigrants who come here seeking a better life we worked hard, and I would go to school from 8 to 12 with the full load. I would go from 1 to 9 at night, six days a week to work at the airport. Two nights a week, from 9.30 to 11.30 at night, I would work at teaching community school guitar. And then I joined the band. Their life is a subject of the hit Broadway show, On Your Feet. It's a tale, as Stefan believes, isn't so much an immigrant story as an American story. Because whether you know it or not, this is what an American looks like. One that's taken on new urgency as we head to the voting booth. We hope that it lessens fear of immigrants that we 
that gets dredged up and, and you know nurtured every time that there's a political campaign and they want to find somebody to blame, it's always usually the last one in. We hope that what it shows them is how connected everybody in the world is, regardless of where you come from, how we all have the same aspirations and dreams so that we see the things that make us the same and not so different.